Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the A-Level Biology series. Today we are going to be covering the human gas exchange system and discuss the effects of smoking on this important process. Mammals such as humans have a poor surface area to volume ratio for gas exchange and so we have evolved a highly adapted internal gas exchange system known as the respiratory system. The respiratory system minimizes water loss and prevents damage to the fragile gas exchange surfaces. The purpose of gas exchange is to take in oxygen from the atmosphere into the lungs and facilitate the diffusion of oxygen into the bloodstream. Also, it removes waste carbon dioxide from the blood and exhales it. These gases move and exchange across specially adapted surfaces by diffusion. The respiratory system consists of a variety of different organs and tissues. The respiratory system is split into the structures of the upper and lower respiratory tracts. The upper respiratory tracts consist of the nose, mouth, nasal cavity, pharynx, the wind or food pipe, and the larynx, which is the voice box. Each has specific functions in respiration. The nose, mouth and nasal cavity act to warm and filter and moisten the incoming air. The pharynx is where the throat divides into the windpipe, trachea, and food pipe, esophagus. A small flap of cartilage called the epiglottis prevents food entering the trachea. The larynx is where sound is generated. It also provides protection to the trachea by producing a strong cough reflex if any solid objects passes the epiglottis. The lower respiratory tract consists of the trachea, aka the windpipe. The inner membrane of the trachea is lined with specialist epithelial cells with tiny hairs called cilia. Cilia catch dust and pollen particles and other debris we breathe in. These tiny hairs move together to sweep the debris up the windpipe to be swallowed. The bronchi. The trachea divides into two tubes called bronchi, one entering the left lung and the other to the right lung. Bronchi are surrounded by irregular rings of cartilage. Once inside the lungs, the bronchi further branch into tertiary bronchi. Bronchioles. As tertiary bronchi continue to branch and divide, they become bronchioles. These are very narrow tubes, less than one millimeter in diameter. There is no cartilage in bronchioles and they lead into the alveolar sacs. Alveoli. These are small hollow cavities. They are often described as having the shape of a bunch of grapes. The walls of the alveoli are extremely thin and only one cell thick to permit the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The alveoli are surrounded by a network of capillaries providing blood flow. And lastly, the diaphragm. This is a band of muscle which sits below the lungs and attached to the lower ribs. The contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm is crucial for inhalation and exhalation of air. Air enters the respiratory tract through the nose and mouth and passes down the, through the trachea, bronchi and bronchioles into the alveoli. The ribs, diaphragm and intercostal muscles help to control breathing air into and out of the lungs. Now let's cover the variety of tissues we have touched upon previously which are found within the respiratory system. Cartilage. Cartilage is a strong and flexible tissue which is found in various places in the body. Cartilage is found in rings around the trachea. This cartilage acts to support the structure of the trachea, keeping it open, but also allowing it to be flexible during breathing. Ciliated epithelial cells. This is a specialized cell which line the trachea down to the bronchi each cell has projections of hair-like structures called cilia. Cilia help to sweep mucus up the airways and away from the lungs by moving in a synchronized motion. 
goblet cells. These are a special type of cell which are found scattered within the ciliated epithelium. These cells secrete a mucus which acts to trap dust particles, debris and harmful microorganisms and prevents them reaching the lungs. This mucus is swept away by cilia. Squamous cells? These cells make up the walls of the alveoli. They are very thin and flattened and highly permeable to gases. Smooth muscle? This is found in the bronchi and the bronchioles. This muscle can constrict and expand to regulate the flow of air into the lungs. For example, when more air is required, they expand to allow more air in. The process of gas exchange. The exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen occurs between the alveoli and the capillaries in the lungs. The gases are exchanged by simple diffusion through the thin cell layers of the alveolar wall and the capillary walls. The air within the alveoli has a high concentration of oxygen in comparison to the blood within the capillary. Therefore, the oxygen diffuses into the blood and is carried away to the rest of the body. Within the capillaries, the concentration of carbon dioxide is high in comparison to the alveoli. So carbon dioxide diffuses into the alveoli where it will be exhaled from the lungs. Alveoli are key players in gas exchange, but how are they well adapted for gas exchange? The alveoli within the lungs are highly adapted to make gas exchange as efficient as possible. There are 300 to 480 million alveoli in the average adult lung, with a combined surface area of approximately 70 square meters. Each alveolus is surrounded by lots of capillaries for good blood supply. The walls of the alveoli and the capillary walls are each only a cell thick. This reduces the diffusion distance for gases and hence increases efficiency of gas exchange. Now for smoking and effects. Cigarettes and tobacco contain harmful chemicals such as tar, nicotine and carbon monoxide. These chemicals increase the risk of developing lung disease, heart disease and cancers of the lungs, mouth and esophagus. These have detrimental effects on the respiratory system. Nicotine is a highly addictive substance and can make users dependent on it, which is why smokers find it difficult to give up smoking. Smoking can impair the function of cilia and the mucus secreting cells, leading to a buildup in mucus, which can irritate the lungs, causing a smoker's cough. Irritation of the bronchi, causing bronchitis, causing coughing and damage to lung tissue. Smoke can damage the walls of the alveoli, causing them to break down and join together, making the air spaces larger than normal. This reduces the efficiency of gas exchange and can lead to the blood not receiving enough oxygen to supply the body. This disease is known as emphysema and can make it difficult for sufferers to carry out even mild exercise. The carbon monoxide component of smoke is particularly damaging because carbon monoxide readily bonds with haemoglobin in place of oxygen. This ultimately puts a lot more strain on the heart to be able to deliver sufficient oxygen supplies to the body's tissues. This increases a person's risk of developing coronary heart disease or having a stroke. So I hope we can all agree that smoking is best to be avoided. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope it helped with your revision on gas exchange system. Hope to see you next week for the fifth video in the series focusing on infectious diseases and antibiotics.